what are the opinions on the effects of environment on the physiologic process of labor in normal low-risk women? A, at home with a midwife, B, at, at the hospital with the GP or an OB. And the question is why? <clears throat> Do you feel it's important for all health professionals to explain this to women, midwives, OBs, GPs, and do they talk about this, especially non-midwifery pro pro providers? That's over to you. I think that uh, non-midwifery providers really aren't aware of the effects of the environment because we're comfortable in the hospital <laughs> and we don't understand that women might not be until we become the woman who comes in in labor. Um, but even then, if we are, because we're comfortable there, we don't understand why women who aren't health professionals aren't comfortable in hospitals. So it goes back to what Sarah said about exposure. And I think that if we could get every medical student to a home birth um, at some point in their career, that would change their perception. And they would understand something about how environment affects women. There is research about it, but it's... It's, it's research that's generally co what's called qualitative. It's, it describes women's experience. And that's harder to understand, and it's harder for very scientific people to um, read and understand that kind of research. So, uh, yeah. Not to contradict you, but I agree that there is qualitative research, but there's actually quite a lot of research around endorphins and chemicals and in other fields, sports medicine and other things, about the effects of how you, what environment and what belief and how you feel on what your body does for you. So it's not exactly uh, environment. We, the only person who really did that biological research was in the 1940s, Niles Newton. And a lot of times people forget about her work. She was a brilliant uh, scientist who worked with pregnant white rats. And she put uh, these pregnant white rats who were healthy and well-fed and cared for into um, two different types of cages, and one, one cage, when they were in labor, would have a little ping sound that came randomly. It was just a sound. It didn't have electrical shock or any impact. It was just a disturbance of their environment. And those pregnant rats had significantly longer and more obstructive labors than the pregnant rats who had an undisturbed environment. So there have been small components of that, that, that uh, biological research um, replicated, but not in humans. So you're right that in humans we don't have information, but we do understand the, um, the effects of uh, environment and belief and relaxation and, uh, on how the physiology of labor, and how it affects muscles. Did you have something to add to that? Well, I think, um, I think it really, a lot of it, it, it depends on the relationship between the provider and the patient, as well as the provider's view of the hospital. So I do, th I, the question of should every provider discuss that with their patient? You know, <coughs> if a patient's come to me as a care provider, uh, they know that they're seeing an obstetrician. And I do talk to them about, if they're low risk, I do talk to them about there are other options. You could see a midwife, you could see a family doctor. And this is my style of providing obstetrical care. And this is the time allotted that I have for prenatal visits. And it's very different from the midwifery model in that um, for the most part, uh, for me to be able to not make a living or anything like that, because I make a very good living and I'm one of the worst paid doctors that I know. But, I, um, but for me to be able to see the volume of patients that are being referred to my office requires me to spend a certain amount of time with my patients. And it really is that. I have a six month waiting list usually and I can't afford to double the time that I spend with patients um, for, on, a, on a regular basis in order to be able to have those discussions which are complex. Um, so I don't think it would be right for m to say that an obstetrician must now, on top of doing all the things that I need to do to ensure that the woman's getting good care, which takes way more time than I would ever be paid for, have to now start to have a complex discussion with my patient about how the environment in the hospital might impact and maybe she's better to go to a midwife and have a home birth. However, I do tell them, bring your own clothes, bring your own pillow, put whatever you want on the bed, don't get in the bed because the bed is a bad thing and it's only in hospitals that we think beds are right for labor. Bring your house coat and your slippers so you don't stay in the room. Don't spend a lot of time lying down. Go in the shower, go in the bath. I mean, I talked to her about all those things and I talked to them about 
writing a birth plan and saying they don't want people sort of coming in and out of the room randomly and we do work to make sure that no one but a nurse would go into your room if you're in a inactive labor. So we, we do we do do those things to try and make the environment and help the women understand how environment is important to them. And in addition, we will, when needed, spend the additional time that is needed to help women feel more comfortable with the hospital birth and help them understand item by item what are the things that might come up. And sometimes I would spend long periods of time, what is very long for me as an obstetrician, but probably normal for midwives, in order to help them be able to overcome those barriers to make a hospital birth what's right for them. I wanted to um, add as well that one thing we all agree on is that women in labor should be active. They should be moving around, and they should be drinking fluids, and if they're hungry, they can eat. And that's just easier to do in the home environment than it is in the hospital. And so whether you have a home or a hospital birth, that's what you want to be doing in early labor. And one of my studies involved enrolling 1,400 women in the Lower Mainland and studying how they cared were cared for in early labor at home. And what we learned from that is that as a society, we haven't seen labor. We haven't seen early labor. And these poor um, partners who have been to you know, five prenatal classes, only one of which dealt with labor and birth and are now confronted with dealing with someone in active labor at home by themselves. They just, you know, it's terrifying for some people. So I think that we really need to focus on early labor. And even for people who have planned a hospital birth and are coming into hospital, to delay that um, as long as they safely can and have that home environment where they are active and moving and doing different things and, and resting better when they need to rest. So that's just a general statement about how we manage labor either way, planned hospital or home birth. That would be another good place where we do actually have very good evidence that being in the hospital in early labor is harmful. And in fact, I make sure I tell all my patients that, that even though I'm well-intentioned and I like to think I'm a nice person, if you come in and labor too early, I will do something to you which will not make your labor better. And so please do your early labor at home. Um, having said that, if you're at home and you're a first-time mom and you don't know what's normal, it's very difficult to avoid the feelings of anxiety uh, if you don't have an experienced grandmother, which many cultures do, or uh, a midwife or a doula or something with you. And so sometimes the decisions that people make on their own in a society where they are alone aren't helpful for their progress of their labor. They stop eating or they stay in bed because they don't feel so good and they don't know anything better or they don't know how to use... Or they, or they get very excited. They, I had a young couple who you know, called me at 2 in the morning, and she was in very early labor, and the reggae music was on loud because they were quite excited that they were going to have their baby. And it was two days later before they had their baby. So she was pretty exhausted by that time. And if she had been in touch with me, if I had known earlier, I would have put her to bed. <laughs> so, you know, there, I think there's, it, it's, it is a, it's a larger issue, the environment, you know, issue. If you're at home and your mother-in-law is there and she's wringing her hands because she thinks you should go to the hospital, that, that will affect your environment too. If you're at home and, and it's not a place that makes you feel comfortable or, or if you're in the hospital, it, then that will affect your labor. So environment is, is important, but it's very individual also, I think. <laughs> 